Uh, hello again. Uh, good morning. Uh, it's been a, a day or two since my last post, and uh, since the last post, uh, a lot has happened. Um, uh, it's it's difficult to keep track of um, everything that's happening everywhere, uh, seemingly on a 24-hour day basis now. Uh, so I, I I've been thinking about. Um, very carefully about what I should uh, make this post about because there are so many different things that I could talk about. Uh, but I thought um, I, I, I continue on the topic uh, of uh, the opposition to proposed changes to Hong Kong's extradition laws, um, the conservative leadership election, need I say more, and uh, a short poetry reading, which um, is interconnected to uh, the issues uh, around the, uh, the Conservative leadership election and could, in a, a very tenuous way, even be connected to the situation in Hong Kong. Um, so, anyway, uh, a brief recap. Since my last post, uh, the situation in Hong Kong uh, became very tense. As many of you will no doubt be aware, um, on Wednesday um, there were some violent clashes um, on Wednesday uh, between demonstrators uh, and police um, in and around uh, Admiralty, which is uh, the the seat of uh, the Legislative Council, uh, LegCo in Hong Kong, um, which personally impacted me in a couple of ways. Um, and uh, the situation seems to have calmed itself a little since uh, the government has temporarily adjourned uh, the second reading, temporarily adjourned uh, discussion of the proposed changes to the two ordinances in question, uh, the Fugitive Offenders Ordinance and the Mutual Assistance in Criminal Matters Ordinance. The, uh, these are the two laws that will be amended uh, by the proposed changes. If you remember from a, an earlier post, ordinances are uh, laws that apply only to a specific city, and uh, this is uh, the legislative competence of LegCo. Uh, or LegCo uh, makes law for Hong Kong only. Um, I was particularly disappointed uh, to see uh, the, uh, the reaction and the behavior of the Hong Kong police force. Um, after certain reforms um, of the police force uh, in the 1960s, Hong Kong's police force was considered to be the best in Asia um, during the final period of, of British administration. Um, various de uh, demonstrations and protests that have taken place um, over the past 15 or 16 years or so, uh, since 2003, have seen that reputation quite severely undermined. And certainly the behavior of the police um, on Wednesday will permanently have undermined uh, their reputation um, as being the best in Asia. Um, we, we can argue over the legality of um, an unauthorized demonstration. Um, as a pure matter of law, demonstrators do have to apply for appropriate permission in order to hold a demonstration. But as a, as a more general principle um, underlying the law, I would argue that if people are protesting peacefully, they are not in contravention of the law. This is their right to do so, certainly historically under the common law, which is, with various adaptations, the law that still operates in Hong Kong, uh, individuals are free to protest. 
the response of the Hong Kong police force was excessive. It was, in many respects, unjustified from the various images uh, and recordings that I've seen. Uh, the use of excessive force is, is not permissible under the common law, uh, which, as I said, with various adaptations that applies in Hong Kong. Were this England, uh, I would imagine that um, many of the officers involved would be suspended uh, and potentially subject to prosecution. Uh, and I would be interested to know um, who authorised uh, the use of such tactics because uh, this individual um, should, would also, if this were England, um, be suspended, I think, or he would be asked uh, to consider his future um, pending an investigation. Um, the police are not above the law. They are subject to the law. They are responsible for enforcing the law. But they are still subject to it. A police officer can no more commit an assault than I can. And the police are subject to the same sanctions if the use of force is not warranted. This is something for the police force of Hong Kong and also for the government of Hong Kong to consider. Um, Hong Kong is not a police state and I would be very concerned about um, life in Hong Kong if the government of Hong Kong and the police of Hong Kong are consider that Hong Kong has become a police state. Um, it is incumbent upon our legislators and the government of Hong Kong now to consider the next steps very carefully. Um, should the proposed changes to the two ordinances in question be withdrawn from consideration completely, be withdrawn from the legislative timetable? Yes. I think everyone can see this. As I have mentioned in previous posts, um, there is a social contract that exists between the people and the government, between the governed and the governors. Um, the people agree to be governed justly within the rule of law and within the principles that enshrine, are enshrined by the rule of law. And um, are the basis of a, of a free and open fair society. Um, that contract breaks down when the government takes it upon itself to behave in a way that is unjustifiable, um, is arrogant, is contemptuous of the people, um, is potentially tyrannical in nature. Um, and the government that attempts to impose upon its people laws that violate their fundamental rights under the law, um, as they are defined under the law, or to curtail rights that have already been granted by the law, which under the common law is, is simply not possible. That power doesn't exist. Um, once rights have been granted, they cannot be taken away. Um, this, this, this undermines the social contract very, very seriously, and it, it's incumbent upon members of LegCo to consider their next steps very carefully. Um, the bill should be withdrawn from the legislative calendar. Um, if it isn't, very significant amendments need to be made. Uh, to guarantee that the rights that are enshrined in law are protected. That there isn't the possibility of extradition um, for a crime that is not actually an extraditable offence. 
um, to ensure that if extradition does occur, it occurs only in circumstances where an alleged, an alleged defendant can be guaranteed a fair, a fair trial, can be guaranteed a trial that is at least equivalent to the protections and due process of law that applies in Hong Kong. Um, so really what is now needed is a brief uh, period of thought and reflection and it needs someone to impose when I say impose I mean to create an environment in which the two sides can reach a consensus as to how to proceed uh, where one side doesn't provoke the other uh, where one side doesn't make unrealistic demands of the other this is the essence of good leadership. So think on what you do, LegCo, legislators. Um, moving on, um, the, the Conservative Party leadership election, uh, first round of voting took place yesterday. Um, Boris Johnson, as was expected, came out on top with 114 out of the, I, I believe it's 311 eligible uh, voters, so approximately a third of the Parliamentary Conservative Party voted for him. Um, as I've said in previous posts, uh, electing Boris Johnson as leader of the Conservative Party is like jumping out of the fat into the fire, the fat of the frying pan into the fire. The man is an incompetent buffoon. He's a narcissistic, egotistical self-promoter. Boris Johnson only cares about one thing. Boris Johnson. His actions, his attitude, every element of his behavior has proven that in the years that he has been a professional journalist and in the years that he has been a so-called professional politician. Um, his tenure as mayor of London was rather embarrassing. His tenure as foreign secretary doesn't even merit comment. Um, he, w without question, has or was, I'm sorry, one of the worst foreign secretaries Britain has ever had. He is a man who is utterly incapable of behaving and of speaking in a diplomatic tone. The country's most senior diplomat is incapable of spouting anything but verbal dysentery. How on earth is this man supposed to be the head of government, supposed to represent Britain on the world stage and represent Britain in the most important, important of several generations? negotiations, perhaps the, uh, the most important peacetime negotiations which Britain will ever undertake, the withdrawal in whatever form it ever takes from the European Union. Boris Johnson is not the man to do this. He will up the ante. He will over-egg the pudding. He will pour more lighter fuel onto the fire. Whatever colourful language and metaphors you can think of to create, he will do it. Because he thinks rhetorical bombast is a substitute for sound diplomacy, decision-making, and application of political philosophy. It isn't. It's nothing but the worst demagoguery, appealing to the lowest common denominator. A Donald Trump-esque approach. So Boris Johnson should not, should not be elected leader of the Conservative Party because by default he will become Prime Minister. This, as I have said, is like jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. It would be utter madness. But unfortunately, 
a conservative party, which has for a very long time been considered the natural party of government, has proven itself in the past decade to be morally bankrupt, to be utterly bereft of common sense. It has delegitimized itself and delegitimized any, any claim it had to be the party of government. So I would not trust a single one of these cretins to cast a sensible vote in the upcoming election. You should be ashamed of yourselves for the impasse in which we find ourselves. The whole lot of you, for all the mistakes that have been made since the, uh, the referendum, since the decision to hold the referendum, in fact, since the first coalition in 2010, the Conservative Party is no longer the natural party of government. It's a party of egotistical, incompetent buffoons, and these people think they can recommend the right candidate to be the next British Prime Minister. This should be the end of the Conservative Party. They should do the honourable thing and leave at stage left. I pointed right, actually, there, but <laughs> I meant but your oh, mirror image. They should leave stage left. There should be a general election. There should be constitutional reform. The question of Brexit is still vexed, but we should leave and consider reapplying for re-entry at some point in the future. But not with Boris Johnson. Not with Jeremy Hunt, either. This man's a third-rate administrator as well, in the mould of Theresa May. I wouldn't trust him to organise a drink in a pub. But, c'est la vie. It is what it is. Moving on, poetry reading, the final point I'm going to make today. It's connected very much to uh, what I just said about uh, the Conservative Leadership Party election uh, and the future of Britain. Um, it's actually from the 9th of June 2017, approximately a year after uh, the referendum was held, the, uh, the referendum to leave uh, the uh, European Union. Um, but it, again, it could have been written at the time, it could have been written today, because none of the issues have been resolved. And the future of the country is still in the lap of the gods. And the history that we live with is still poisoning us. England more so than the other nations of, of the United Kingdom. But in a way, to an extent, Hong Kong is also still living with this legacy, the legacy of colonialism. And as an Englishman, an educated Englishman, but a dissident Englishman, a man who has no love for his country, I I apologize deeply and out of a deep sense of shame to the people of Hong Kong that colonialism was ever thrust upon you, but during the period of colonialism, many people from mainland China felt that Hong Kong was a safe haven. And yet now, the tide of history has turned and it may no longer be. So, as a as an educated Englishman with a deep sense of history, but also a deep sense of shame, I apologize sincerely for the legacies of colonialism.
Okay, so this is taken from volume four of my anthology, John Bon Onion, A Poet Taster's Progress, and it's called In Memoriam, from the 9th of June, 2017. O land of my birth, how I mourn for thy dearth. How has it come to this? How can there be so much shit? How can the land of Chaucer, Spencer, Shakespeare and Marlowe, Newton, Hooke, Darwin and Crick, the land of the Protestant Reformation, the Restoration, the Glorious Revolution, Constitutional Monarchy, and the Eng where the English language was first writ, the lingua franca from the White Cliffs, the Common Law and Magna Carta, whose provisions still reigned from Berwick-upon-Tweed to Alberta, to all the way to Christchurch and further. The European Convention and the European Charter, the agricultural, scientific and industrial revolutions were born, the mother of parliaments and father of more, the home of the empire on which the sun never set, and the defeaters of Nazism and begetters of freedom, and the national health have come to this. On our knees being laughed at kicks. How, O oh England, have you died? and let those fucking politicians of the left and right weaken and destroy everything for which you sacrifice. How many of them have stuck in the knife and in the recent past twisted it, spat in your eye and left you at the side on the slow lane of history to die? Is it true that a country gets the leaders it deserves? Then, good Lord, England must be a giant cow turn. All the leaders it's got from 1960 on have shat upon that upon that England front and back. Enough to engorge all the lawns in that once green and pleasant land. Enough for it to be covered from Land's End to John O'Groats Grand. How, how have you snatched defeat from the jaws of victory to look into eternal night when once your future was so bright? O land of my birth, how I mourn for thee. O land of my birth, I shed tears, myriadly. As I said, it could have been written five years ago, three years ago, could have been written yesterday. It not only speaks to the failures of Britain as a country, the English ruling elite in particular, but it also speaks to the legacies of what was once considered British greatness, but are in fact British crimes, in particular the crimes of the English ruling elite. How can we resolve all of these intractable, intractable problems. How can we solve these problems? We need to do this through building consensus. We need to do this with an effective leader who understands how to lead Not in the way that Theresa May, Carrie Lam have done so far, leadership is about making compromises, it's about making choices, it's about finding consensus, it's about leading by example. So both to members of LegCo and the Hong Kong government, to members of the British Conservative Party, I implore you to think on what you do and consider your next steps in your various competences very carefully. Okay. 
That's all for today. I've spoken for longer than I intended to. 25 minutes instead of 15. But I had a lot to say, and I could have said so much more. But I don't want to bore you. So, until next time, which could be tomorrow or Monday. Let me see how I feel over the weekend. Goodbye, and peace.